On October 14th, 2012, the bathroom was eerily quiet as Ari Liggett began his meticulous cleaning of the house that he shared with his mother. He scrubbed every surface in the house intensely before finally moving over to the bathroom. It would have seemed like a thoughtful gesture from a 24-year-old son to his mother, but the truth was far more sinister. Just moments ago, Ari had used a handsaw and a large kitchen knife to dismember his mother's body in the very same bathtub he was now scrubbing. He nonchalantly placed the bloody tool in the dishwasher, as if washing the dishes after a simple meal. Beverly Liggett, 56, had been a victim of her own son's madness. Their home in Centennial, Denver, was far from peaceful, as Ari's long-standing battle with mental illness had reached a point of no return. It was a tragedy that happened between what should have been an unbreakable bond. Before we start, if you find this video fascinating, then at the end, please drop it a like and let me know what you thought about the case. It helps the channel. Also, don't forget to hit subscribe for more. Thank you. Despite their efforts to help him, Ari Liggett's parents were helpless in the face of his uncontrollable behavior. He pushed back against any intervention and only spiraled further out of control. His encounters with police became more frequent and he even threatened his own mother and sister with violence. But Beverly Liggett, a newly graduated nurse, couldn't just abandon her son. Her love for him blinded her to the danger that lurked within their home. She confided in friends about her fear that consumed her, but she never could have imagined the horrific fate that awaited her. From as young as aged five, Ari Liggett's mental illness was apparent. He was regularly seeing a psychiatrist as a child. His father, Ron Ligger, recalled how his son would cling to his mother's clothes and avoid interacting with other children. There was no play, no pretend play. He would never explore the outer world, and that was his life. Doctors diagnosed him with a range of conditions, including schizophrenia and mild autism. Ari showed no signs of violence, but his personal isolation took a disturbing turn as he grew older. He paced and talked to himself incessantly, behaviors that left Ron feeling deeply unsettled and afraid. Despite their attempts to get help for him, Ari's condition worsened, leading to several involuntary stays in mental institutions over the years. Although it appeared almost impossible to deal with, this case shows the devastating consequences of untreated mental illness. The warning signs were there all along. In 2010, at just 22 years old, Ari Liggett's behavior took a dark turn when he was arrested for manufacturing a silencer. During interrogation, he made a reference to a suitcase containing potentially dangerous substances at a local homeless shelter. It was a moment that set off a chain of events that would end in the death of his mother. The shelter was closed for hours as a bomb squad and hazmat team searched for the suitcase. Inside, they found a jar filled with a granular substance. The deadly compound can become fatal in various forms. Ari was held on a $100,000 bail, but his treatment for mental health issues remained unclear. It is thought he spent the next two years in a mental institution. He was also placed on the FBI's watch list. Two years later, he was back living with his mother. 
As Beverly's boyfriend of five years, Seth Mazier was painfully aware of her entrapment in a dire situation. No resources could rescue her from the looming danger, and the outcome was destined to be bleak. But Seth had never imagined it would spiral so far out of control. The tragedy of it all weighed heavily on him, he said. We were planning to grow old together. We were going to have a good life. She deserved a good life. Unfortunately for them both, fate had other plans. Beverly had graduated from nursing school with honors, dedicating herself to helping people with disabilities. She was deeply loved by both her patients and employers, and her passion for her work was admirable. Seth and Beverly's love story had started on a dating website where they had found happiness in each other's company. Seth said, we were so happy together. She made me laugh, I made her laugh. They had planned to marry someday, but that dream was now shattered. He continued, she deserves to be remembered with love and admiration, and she will be. But the chilling reality of her loss loomed large, showing the fragility of life and the cruel twists of fate that can snuff out a bright future in an instant. The mental health of her son Ari had become a looming shadow in Beverly's life, a weight that she could never shake. His condition steadily deteriorated and her concern for him was all-consuming. She feared the worst for him, the kind of fate that awaited those confined to mental health hospitals. But Beverly's love for Ari was fierce and she vowed to keep him out of such a place, no matter the cost. Desperate to find out more about Ari's condition, Beverly turned to his psychiatrist but the law prevented the psychiatrist from sharing any information, leaving Beverly in a state of perpetual worry. She had seen the signs that Ari had stopped taking his medication, and the prospect of him spiraling out of control terrified her. In a drastic move, Beverly removed Ari from her will. She had become increasingly alarmed by his behavior and she could not take the risk leaving him with any resources that might enable him to do harm to himself or others. Then, silence fell over Beverly's world. On October 14th, no one had heard from her. Her daughter, Livia Liggett, and her ex-husband Ron contacted Seth to see if he had been in contact with Beverly but he said he had only received vague and cryptic responses via text messages and email. In the lead up to 2012, Ari began a sinister plot. He secretly purchased large quantities of a deadly substance that would act quickly. He spent months perfecting the art of mixing lethal cocktails, all with one goal in mind to kill his mother. On the 14th of October, Ari's heinous plan came to fruition. Using the substance, he ended his mother's life. But that was only the start of the chilling events. With Beverly dead, Ari was faced with the daunting task of disposing of her remains. He dragged her body into the bathtub, where he proceeded to dismember her with a handsaw and a large kitchen knife, leaving deep gouges in the tub as he worked. For the next 24 hours, Ari meticulously chopped up Beverly's body and cleaned the house. Once her remains were in manageable pieces, he placed them in plastic storage containers filled with olive oil before stowing them away in the back of the car. Seth and Ron were both gripped by a deep sense of foreboding, a gnawing feeling that something was seriously amiss. Despite their best efforts to remain calm, an unsettling fear began to take hold of them. Ron's heart raced as he dialed his ex-wife's number 
hoping for some reassurance. But the voice on the other end, it was Ari, pretending to be his mother. Ron knew in his gut that something was wrong. Without wasting another moment, Seth and Ron sprang into action, setting up a missing persons report. The icy grip of fear tightened around them as they contemplated the possibilities of what might have happened to their loved one. The police arrived at Beverly's house, only to find her car missing. They felt a sense of unease as they searched the rest of the premises. But when they discovered her keys still inside the home, their worst fears began to take shape. As they combed through the house, they found traces of blood in the freezer and bathtub. The search continued and the handsaw was uncovered, hidden away in the dishwasher. But what made their blood run cold were the traces of ligament still stuck inside the blade. Police traced Beverly's bank transactions and it showed activity in the western slope. The discovery raised concerns about the motive behind her disappearance, adding to the already eerie situation. Not long after, a deputy who was stationed at Beverly's home reported seeing a car that resembled hers and they alerted the authorities. While trying to intercept the car, a police officer pulled over the vehicle, but before he could approach it, the driver, Ari, sped away recklessly. There was a high-speed pursuit that ended in Ari crashing into a concrete wall. He attempted to flee the scene on foot, but was quickly apprehended. During his arrest, a police car dash cam recorded some interesting comments. Yeah, I mean, you guys tell me they put my hands out the window. <laughs> yeah, I just put your hands out the window, not start the car back up and take off. I can't tell right from wrong. I'm just saying that psychiatrist convince you guys that there is not probable cause that I am legally sane to do you press criminal charges. I think breaking most laws is the right thing to do because most people are demons. I think that everyone can read my mind, see the past, the future, and shape change. He is clearly saying these things as he believes he will be immune from prosecution. When officers checked Beverly's car, on the back seat they found two padlocked plastic containers with the remains of Beverly inside. Ari's plan was to take his mother's remains to a storage unit. As he drove to the desolate area where he planned to rent a unit, a cold sense of purpose fueled his every move. His intent was clear, to hide his mother far away from himself and others. But when he arrived, the reality of his dire financial situation struck him. His lack of foresight and poor judgment was chilling, and it seemed that he was oblivious to the gravity of his actions. With a desperate need for cash, he had no choice but to turn back and seek other means to fund his plan. His idea was to go home and sell his PlayStation, and this is where the officer spotted him. Ari was brought in for questioning, his words dripping with malice and deceit. His disturbing confession that he found his mother dead on the floor of their home was a thinly veiled attempt to deflect the blame from himself. His twisted mind had convinced him that his mother's death was her own doing, a justification for his sickening actions. But the true horror lay in the claims of his insanity, as he believed that this would absolve him of the crimes he had committed. Everyone has these telepathic powers. I don't understand why I'm here. You know, you should be, um, you know, commending me for being the way, the truth, and the light. And, you, you know, instead you get, you know, in an accident and a little bit of a speeding chase with a Greenwood Village police officer. And it's like, you want to end me because of one possibility that you see. His cold words revealed a warped sense of morality and his assertion 
that his definition of right or wrong may be different from what others think. This in his mind was his get out clause. He goaded the police by saying, if you tell me your evidence, I can tell you why it didn't happen that way. It was clear that he had no remorse for his actions. He also added that they could not prove he was sane. You know, my psychiatrist and therapist can prove that I have a completely inculpable state of mind and have had it for months. In his mind, so he said, his intentions were far from innocent and his plan to plead insanity seemed like a feeble attempt to escape the justice he deserved. The conclusion of the state hospital's evaluation of Ari deemed that he was in fact sane and fit to stand trial, even after being deemed competent. To face the consequences of his actions, Ari clung to his defense of insanity. The prosecution lay bare the truth of Ari's twisted motives. They said, there's a method in his madness, revealing a dark plot to murder his own mother, his festering anger at being cut out of her will, and his unfounded blame of her for his health problems, fueled his sinister scheme for years. Ari's defense team attempted to invoke sympathy for his mental illness, claiming that his actions were the result of complete psychosis. They insinuated that he was incapable of planning a murder due to his fragile state of mind and criticized the way he had been treated in the past. But their attempts to garner leniency for him were met with a cold indifference. The jury refused to be swayed by the defense team's arguments and delivered a damning verdict. They seen the calculated nature of Ari's actions. His plan to kill his own mother had been carefully crafted over years. In the end, Ari's defense team's attempts to absolve him from his guilt failed miserably. And the chilling verdict, Ari Liggett was convicted of first degree murder and was sentenced to life in prison without parole. Ari showed no emotion when sentenced, but did shift in his seat when the judge described his mother's unconditional love for her son. Beverly was quoted, her fear for her son became a fear of her son. After the hearing, Ari's sister, Livia, said her family had moved heaven and earth to get Ari help, but it wasn't enough. She said, in the end, my brother is 100% guilty of his crime. Whether or not it could have been prevented, I don't know. That's the end of this episode. Until next time, stay sane.